been making this video for over a month now, probably two months, it's been a while. I did three different paintings on the topic of hair and I thought I could share some of the techniques that I use when I'm painting. I'm going to show you the three different paintings as a preview of what's about to come in the next few minutes. This was the first one I did. It's of a straight, sort of long and slightly wavy hair tie. This was the second one that I did because I don't see that many tutorials out there on how to do sort of textured, frizzy or coily hair, even though it's not even as coiled as mine. And this is upside down. And this was the, the third type that I did, just to really give you an idea that it's the same technique no matter what kind of hair you are doing and that it can be very, very detailed or not so detailed. So those are the three types. It is a voiceover. I hope that it's useful and that you enjoy it. Do ask me if you have any other questions because I might have forgotten something since I've been doing this for a while. So I'll just get started. The first thing that I do is block the shadows and the highlights. The first painting that I do is with straight hair, which in some ways is easier to do than curlier, frizzier hair. Not because of the technique, but because you make less strokes and marks to achieve the right form. If you start with the right brush, because there are all these tiny hairs that make up the brush itself, when you're applying the paint, you're creating the effect of hair just by brushing the paint across the canvas. So I start with the light strokes and focus on getting the blacker bits and the whiter bits, the highlights and the shadows. That's all I do at the beginning. It looks like hair immediately because of the paintbrush hairs and I focus on getting the right shape, showing the way the hair falls such as that triangular shadow in the center of the hair, starting at the bottom, and the larger areas of hair to the left and right of it. After using a large brush, I go over with a much tinier paintbrush. Now I'm painting the strands. The important thing that I do here is to keep the brush wet, using thinner intermittently. One thing I do is twirl the paintbrush in the thinner at a horizontal angle to get a sharp tip. I do very light lines, as if the paint is too thick, it will not flow from the tip of the paintbrush properly. You can see me struggling with this a little for the loose strands to the left where the lines are thick and thin and not even from the top to bottom. I mess up in getting that silky look as the brush was not wet and the paint was too thick. I keep my hand steady by breathing properly, using my other fingers to stabilize my hand as I'm painting or sometimes I hold my elbow as I'm making the strokes. When I'm doing the highlights, I use a lot of white. You can color the image later by glazing as I do in the third painting or you can mix properly from the beginning by mixing in cooler blues or umber depending on the individual's hair or the lighting and mood you're going for. In this painting, I put in some umber to stay true to the color that I was seeing. You'll notice that where the light is exactly bouncing off of the hair, I make the paint thicker. I get the right effects by how the paint is applied and moving the brush across the canvas. It starts off with a lot of paint and as you make the stroke, it thins out. I keep painting and focus on getting the patterns of light. I actually go over it because I had made these strands of hair that were short so it made her hair look as if it were clipped and that was wrong. So I went back to keep the strands long, it's not as if she had a band. I keep painting just get into details. The more detail you want, the more strands you put in and the tinier your paintbrush. I just keep doing this, I keep going until I feel like the hair is falling right. You couldn't really tell what I'm fixing if you don't have the source image. For the second painting and different type of hair, this is much more frizzy. It's the exact same technique, it just takes longer because you have to make so many more strokes that are shorter, tighter and require more movement of the hand. Instead of long waves, you are either making shorter waves or short horizontal lines that run parallel as they curve, but each line still has its own waves. I'll put a little clip here just to detail exactly what I mean. So I'm totally cheating because this is pencil and not paint, but these are sort of long wavy strokes. I'm not showing the color. The lighting is just to show the strands and the marks that you're making with the paintbrush. And these are those long wavy lines that run sort of parallel to each other but might have their own curve. And you know, the different points don't all start at the same line, you're showing the, the beginnings at different points. And then these are the short parallel lines that show coils perhaps. Again, no patterns of light, it's just to show the strands. This is the effect. It could be more detailed, 
maybe there's some there's some crisscross going on but this is what I was talking about see if there's anything else oh and then also for the frizz this is what I mean by you have all the little lines that overlap each other like those sort of baby hairs that I show somewhere longer so it doesn't really look like anything but this is exactly what I'm doing when I'm painting where her hair is being catched up into the buns these are again long strokes but they're wavy they're these tiny little waves that you create and how wavy they are depends on the hair type you use darker colors and then lighter ones to show the highlights where her hair meets the scalp it's the same technique of starting with the thick paint and allowing it to thin out keeping the brush wet so I'm going from top to bottom to get the right strokes and it appears as if it starts at this tiny point that emerges from her scalp and I do it at different points behind the hairlines and not just at the hairline so it looks more realistic I'm also careful to paint the skin of the scalp first and then paint the hair extended over it to recap it's the same thing as in the first painting I start with blocking the shadows and highlights, creating the effect of the light first and foremost, which guides how light or dark the colors are as I'm putting the strands down for that spot of the hair. For the edges where you can see those little strands that come out from the bun and are prominent against the white of the background, I'm making these tiny curls. It's the exact same thing that I do with the first painting, except it's long strands rather than short curls. So we're just creating this frizzy pattern by making little waves and shorter curlier strokes and putting them on top of each other. You're always trying to create a pattern and effect when you're making the strands. For the third example, I just wanted to show you how much it really is the exact same thing that you're doing. I start off with blocking the right shapes and showing the patterns of light, the shadows and highlights. The basic shapes are long cylinders that lay flat along his head, but are wavy, and the outside edges are dark and the centers are light. But this could be different depending on the light source. Then, I'm putting the strokes of the strands, doing some dark hairs towards the edges where it's dark, and then lighter hairs in between where there's a transition and then brighter ones towards the middle where it's light following the same pattern of light that I initially started with. I use some color from the get-go but have a lot of white for the brightest strands. After the paint has dried I go over it with a thin layer of paint that's called glazing. I use umber and ochre yellow to get that gold brown look that I'm seeing. I'm a bit crazy with my strokes because I'm trying to create the effect. The hair isn't falling neatly, it's not combing to a bun, it's haphazard. It's neither long wavy strands nor short tighter curls. It's curled in disarray, sort of like football, as opposed to synchronized swimming. I'm creating the look that I see. I could have been more details but you definitely get the effect of realistic hair. And if you want to be details, you do more strokes and you do finer strokes that are more precise and follow as close as possible the pattern of light that you are seeing. This is what I do. If you have any questions, again, do ask me. Sometimes you don't realize what you're doing unless someone asks you and then you can explain even further. If you're practicing, you'll figure out what works for you. This is just a guide. I hope this was useful. Have a great day. Goodbye until next time.